Okay, this video is all about first time cruising success. I'm going to take you on a journey step by step through everything you need to know before taking your first cruise. So if that interests you, stay tuned and we'll get started. I'm Vonda and this is Travel with Vonda and today we're going to go over my personal first time and maybe not so first time cruiser tips. For those of you who are planning a cruise this year, drop me a comment below and let me know where you're going and who knows, I'll probably do a video about one of your port destinations so that you can know a little bit more about it. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to discuss is the booking process. So, of course, you're going to get a quote, whether you call a travel agent or whether you go to a website and you look up the cruise amount, but you're going to get your quote. They're also going to put give you a deposit amount. So, your deposit is going to depend on three things. One, how many people are going on the cruise with you? Two, which cruise line you're sailing on and three how long is the cruise that you're traveling on once you take those three things into account you can expect a cruise deposit anywhere from a hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars per person you'll be closer to a hundred dollars for shorter cruises three to five days and you'll be closer to two hundred and fifty dollars for longer cruises that are seven days plus. Now, if you're planning a Disney cruise, these tips will vaguely apply to you, but Disney is its own special beast, as always with Disney. So, I will do a totally different video on Disney cruises and the tips that you need to be a first time cruiser on Disney. Now, back to the subject now. Once you have made your deposit, make sure you put yourself on a payment plan. And you're like, okay, how do I put myself on a payment plan? Well, it's simple. Just take note of your final payment dates. More on those in a minute. And then take how many months you have left into that date. Take how much you have left to pay, divide it by the number of months that are left to pay it, and boom, monthly payment amount. So that way you don't feel overwhelmed with this looming amount of money that you have to pay. Now, back to final payment dates. They vary a lot by cruise lines. They can be anywhere from 60 days before your cruise all the way to 180 days before your cruise. So make sure you pay attention to what those final payment dates are. Now. Once your cruise is booked, you should definitely research cruise and or travel insurance. You usually have about 12 to 14 days after you pay your deposit to book the best travel insurance package. Every cruise line offers insurance for their cruises, but I personally feel that you should book with a third party agency. And the reason for that is one, it's usually much cheaper than the cruise lines. And secondly, let's just be honest. If something happens to the cruise line that causes your cruise to be canceled, who's going to pay you? I'm just asking. It's just a thought. Okay. <laughs> well, but regardless of who you buy it with, the cruise line or a third party agency, definitely get it because... As we all know, the hurricane season 2017 was nuts. So you definitely don't want to just kind of throw your, chip, your trip up in the air and hope for the best. So now that you're all booked, you have your payment plan set up. Now you need to start thinking about a couple of details. First of all, how are you getting to your chosen port? Of course, you can drive. Now, if you drive, you have to think, Am I going to park at the port or am I going to park off site? Parking at the port is convenient, but it's also more expensive. Just a heads up. <laughs> there are services 
that offer off-site parking and they have shuttles that will bring you back to the cruise ship so that you can leave for your cruise and they'll also pick you back up and take you back to your car so those are some options to explore <clears throat> secondly if you're flying to the port you also have options but before i start giving you the options i'm going to highly suggest that you leave at least a day before your cruise because we've all heard about flight delays, flight cancellation nightmares, being stuck in the airport. So if you can avoid that, please do. Now, if you leave a day early, now you can take advantage of what they have in most port cities, which are stay and cruise packages, which where you can stay at a hotel the night before your cruise, and they will shuttle you from the hotel to the cruise ship and from the cruise ship back to the airport great deal definitely want to check that out but be careful because some hotels do not offer the transportation from the hotel to the cruise ship they only offer it from the airport to their hotel so make sure you read those packages really well and know what you're getting into before you pay if you don't want to go with an outside party, you can also use the cruise line. The cruise line often have shuttles, but they're only on the day of the cruise. So if you choose not to come in a day early and you want to fly straight in, make sure that you look and see what the options are for your cruise ship so that um, you can definitely um, get the option of having the cruise line shuttle you from the airport to the cruise ship. Now, often they cut off when they're doing their transportation a couple of hours, well, really several hours, four hours or so before the cruise ship leaves is their last shuttle. So make sure you pay attention to how your air, airline flight is coming in in comparison to how the cruise ship is doing their particular shuttle transportation. So you don't want those over those two to miss each other. The excitement is building and it's now time to research where you're going. And I recommend Facebook and YouTube. And that's because on Facebook, there are these fabulous cruise groups. I'm a member of some of them. <laughs> and they have great info from real people who have been to these places and they tell you about the great ports that they've been to and the things that they've done. So that's your first option for that. Your second option is, of course, YouTube, where you're watching me now. <laughs> so there are hundreds of videos out there by travel bloggers, vloggers, whatever the case, who tell you about the ports that they've been to and how they feel about them and the great tips that they've learned from going there. Now, if you can't find what you want, shoot me an email, shoot me a comment, and I'll do a video about it. Simple and easy. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. So, your final payment date is passed. Your cruise is paid in full. What do you do next? Now, you're going to go through your online check-in process. Okay, what's online check-in? It's where you provide more detailed information about you to the cruise line. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to go to whatever cruise line you're sailing on and create an account. And once you create that account, you can associate your booking number, so you're going to need that number, with whatever cruise, with your specific account so that your cruise can be associated with you. You're also going to be prepared to give your full name, your address, your phone number, and emergency contact. So have all that information ready. Also, if you are flying where you live to the port, they're also going to want to know about your flight information. So be prepared with your flight numbers so that you know, so that you can put those in and they'll have a better idea of where you're coming from. Once that step's done, now you have some decisions to make. First, you're going to have to decide how to pay for your 
on ship purchases. Cruise ships are cashless societies, so everything is attached to, we're just going to call it sign and sale card. <laughs> And it's like a little card that you use to open your hotel room. And it'll double as your room key as well. But in order to pay for things on the ship through that card, you're going to have to attach some form of payment. So you can do a credit or a debit card during your online check-in. Or wait until you get to the actual port the day of the cruise and you get on the cruise ship and you can apply a cash amount to your account on that day. So, moving on. Now you have to decide dining times. Okay, most cruise lines have three dining times. There's early dining, which is usually between 6 and 6.30 p.m. There's late dining, which is usually around 8 to 8.30 p.m. And then, depending on the cruise line, they'll call it freestyle, my time, anytime dining, which is anywhere between about 545 and 9 o'clock. Now, be aware that no matter which tier of dining you choose, whether it's early, late, anytime, freestyle, my time, you know, depending on the cruise line, you are still open to go to the buffet and eat dinner. Most of the time the cruise line posts their menu for the day outside of the dining hall and you can go and see it early before you have to eat and you may say mm, nothing tickling my fancy. So you're free to go to the buffet. You're not restricted to just eating in the dining hall simply because you've chosen a dining time. And you have to choose a dining time. They're not going to let you finish your online check-in if you don't. But just know that you're not stuck eating in the dining hall. Now that you've done, created your account, you've chose your dining time, you've applied it to your account, <laughs> now you are on to the next step. Let's say you want to do something special like eat at the steakhouse, take a behind-the-scenes tour, um, do something that has to, that's a little more off the beaten path, that's a little more outside of the norm, then you definitely want to go ahead and book those things right off the top because they fill up fast. Like, for example, Carnival has the chef's table where you actually get to sit in the galley of the um, kitchen and you get to see the chefs prepare your meal you actually get to meet the executive chef well that particular program only allows for anywhere from 10 to 15 people depending on the ship and it goes fast so you don't want to wait 10 15 days before your cruise to decide to book something like that you kind of want to get in early book those things quickly or read up on them you know decide if you want to do that and get it done trust me you'll thank me later <laughs> next you have your shore excursions you can research those they are broken down by the ports that you're going to so it's just um, a simple and easy click and it'll tell you everything that's available and I also advise you to book those in advance because the best ones fill up fast Swimming with the dolphins, anything that has to do with water sports tends to fill up fast. Zip lining, all those things fill up fast. So you want to definitely book them as soon as possible. If you can't book them prior to your cruise, then you can go to the shore excursions desk on your ship on the day that your cruise leaves and book those shore excursions if they're available then. So you do have options because that's what cruising is all about options so let's talk gratuities okay gratuities are service fees that go to your room steward staff the people who clean your room and your dining staff they are charged to every single person that goes on a cruise and it's a per day charge so unless you're under two years old you're going to pay a gratuity. Now, you have the option to pay gratuities before your cruise, 
like you can edit in with your final payment or pay it a couple of weeks before you leave or you can wait until you get on the ship and they will automatically deduct it from your form of payment so keep that in your mind and make sure when you're budgeting for your cruise that if you don't pay your gratuities in advance that you have enough money on your card to cover them as soon as you get on the ship because they take it quick no questions asked <laughs> so how much are gratuities the average gratuity is anywhere from 1250 to 20 dollars per day per person depending on your room category so those rooms that are balcony and below tend to pay a lower gratuity amount whereas suites pay a higher amount so you're at least going to be prepared to pay at the minimum about $12.50. I think the cheapest gratuities right now are in Norwegian are equal at about $12.95. Don't quote me on that because they'll go up in a minute as soon as I'm talking. So anywhere around that area, be prepared to pay that amount. After you have completed your online check-in, you booked all your specialty items, you looked at your sure excursions, you will be prompted to print three items. One is a boarding pass for every person in your party, the health forms, and the luggage tags. Sidebar, health forms. The health forms, they're not kind of, they're really only for women. <laughs> and the reason is, is because the cruise line wants to know, are you pregnant? And it doesn't matter if your daughter is 12 or 13 you're going to have to fill out one and say that she is not pregnant pregnant how many months you are if you're at a certain window of pregnancy which is usually that last trimester um you can't cruise some cruise lines it depends some will say that they don't take any passengers who are over six months some say seven so you're going to fill out that health form to tell them whether or not you're pregnant or not <laughs> form with you because they are they are very pushy about it if you don't fill it out you don't get on the ship so make sure you print that out and take it with you also like i said you'll get your luggage tags which are super important to have on your luggage um if you are flying into your into your port don't attach those luggage tags until after you land so just kind of slip them in a pocket or um, put them in your carry-on so that they don't get lost and then once you get your luggage at baggage claim then you can kind of attach it then um, and I suggest having some some tape of some type anything to just get it onto your bag <laughs> so that's definitely the whole thing to get it onto your bag and make sure it stays um, I highly suggest printing all those items your luggage tags your boarding passes and and um, health form about two weeks before you cruise um, that way there's a lesser chance of them getting lost getting misplaced and you're not searching all around so here we are we're finally at embarkation day or as I call it, the happiest day ever. Finally, you finally arrived at the port and you're ready to board the ship. One, you need to make sure that you have your boarding passes, your health form, and however, whatever form of ID you're using to get on the ship, whether it's a passport or whether it's your birth certificate and ID ready to roll. Because as soon as you step near that terminal, there are going to be individuals standing there. And you could get scanned eight or nine times. <laughs> My last cruise, I had four people check me before I even got inside the terminal. So make sure you have those, pa those papers ready and willing. Get you a, a document holder or a bag of some type where you can keep it all together and if somebody comes up to you with one of those little scanners you can say here I am I'm supposed to be here have that information ready to roll 
let's talk about things that we should not bring on the cruise with us <laughs> okay do not bring any bottled water of any type at all it's forbidden it doesn't matter what cruise line you're on no bottled water somebody out there there's a video on youtube about it <laughs> where they were showing people how to smuggle alcohol onto cruise ships via water bottles and here we are with no bottled water allowed on the cruise ship and i'm quite sure there were other issues that prompted them you know financially to do it but i'm quite sure that was at least 50 percent of it depending on the cruise line that you're going on some of them do allow you to bring canned sodas so you can bring one 12 pack of canned sodas per person um also i've seen in some cases and it just really depends on the cruise line and it depends on who you happen to interact with when you're going through the line i have seen people be able to bring the juice boxes or the um capri sun juice packs and as long as they're in their container for their children so i think it's a little wiggle room in that area but always ask ask and find out you also can bring on a bottle of wine um some cruise lines allow you to bring two li two bottles per person some allow one so just make sure you check with your cruise line other forms of alcohol are not allowed no no go no don't even ask. you're going to drop off your luggage with the luggage tags on it at the porters make sure you tip them it makes things go smoother trust me <laughs> okay and once you get past the porters you're going to go to the line to get into the terminal and it's very similar to tsa at the airport but not so many rules and once you get past the little checkpoint, you'll go to a desk. Once you get to that desk, you're going to um, give your boarding passes and your information to the representative for your cruise line who's behind that desk. And they are going to officially check you in. And at that point, you will receive a sign and sale card for every person in your group. And... I highly suggest you have like a lanyard to hang it around your neck because it's so much easier to keep up with that way. Once you get that card, there are two things that are going to happen depending on when you arrived at the port. Usually if you arrive before about 1130, you're going to be asked to remain inside the terminal and they have seating for you. Then you will be, an, an announcement will be made as to when you can board the ship. And once you board the ship, you're going to be restricted to certain areas because the ship has not been totally flipped yet. And oftentimes when ships are coming in, they're coming straight off of another cruise, going straight out onto another one. So they need time to flip the bedding, clean everything from top to bottom. So they usually start letting guests on board, depending on the cruise line, about 11, 30, 12. And you will be allowed to head straight to the pool, straight to the buffet. And honey, it's like March of the Penguins. <laughs> so everybody's going straight in that direction. If you arrive closer to like one o'clock or even after one o'clock, then you're going to have you're not going to probably have to wait in the terminal you'll be allowed to go straight onto the ship and the closer you are to 1 or 1 30 the more likely the chances are that the rest of the ship is opened up and you'll be able to go to your room drop off your luggage and then if you have carry-ons then you'll be able to come back and enjoy the pool and head for the buffet you will receive your luggage and they'll sit it by your door some some cruise ships actually put it inside your room it just it's totally dependent on the staff you'll meet your room steward and this is a perfect time to explore the ship get to know it 
try to get to know as much as you can the first day. So you're just kind of not wandering around, you know, with your eyes in the back of your head, wondering what in the heck are we doing. We're officially on the cruise, and there are so many activities that are happening every day. And those activities are outlined for you in your daily news. So each cruise ship has a different name for it, um, but it's going to be left in your room each evening by your room steward when they do their evening cleanup. If you opt out of an evening cleanup, they will put it in your little mail mailbox slot by your door. Days. Port days are the days when the ship stops at a port. In general, the ships usually stop sometime early to mid-morning. And they leave sometime late afternoon, about 3, 4, 5. Um, it's different if you have an overnight stay, but in general. Um, if you have any shore excursions planned, um, you want to be usually in that first wave of people off the ship. So get up early, run to the buffet, get your breakfast, and head off the ship. If you're not going to do a shore excursion at this particular port, Make sure that you keep an eye on your time. So keep a watch that is, or a phone that is set at ship time. Don't miss the ship because the last thing you want is to be running for your life and the ship's pulling away. You keep your eye on the time and if you booked a shore excursion, most of the time they know to get you back in time. Now on the other hand, there's sea days. Sea days are when the ship is traveling in between ports. Now, this is the perfect time to get up, go eat brunch in the dining hall, get you a spa treatment, enjoy the pool, just relax. If you choose not to leave the ship on a port day and you want to stay around, it's also a great time to do all that stuff too because everybody else is gone. It's crowded, you can get on the water slide, you don't have to wait, you can get all the spa treatments and you don't have to wait for a 4 o'clock appointment. It's great. Embarkation day is that happiest day ever then de-embarkation day is the saddest obvious from your fellow passengers that this cruise is over um that some people have sad faces some people start fussing and arguing some people are looking at their phone upset because they've gotten all these texts from work but don't let it bother you tune it out just block it out because you've been on a great vacation You've had some great memories, and you can go home and book your next vacation. As far as how you get off the ship, there are two options. The self is self deembarkation, where you physically take all your luggage and you move yourself off the ship. This is the fastest option because these people are usually called first to get off the ship. A great option if you didn't pack heavy. Now, on the other hand, if you have mobile issues, um, wheelchairs, um, canes, walkers, any of that, or you just have problems lifting, this may not be the best option for you. So you may want to take on option two, which is the cruise line carrying your luggage off for you. So the night before your cruise ends, they will ask you to put your luggage outside of your door and employees will come and pick it up and you will meet your luggage downstairs in the terminal. If you're looking for more tra travel tips and information, be sure to sign up for my Travel Tips with Vonda newsletter. The link will be in the description box below. And also, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, so am I. I will leave those links below as well so that you can see my daily post and things that I'm talking about on social media. Customs. And when you're at Customs, if you have purchased thing that's $800 or more, you will need to declare that to the government and you will need to fill out a customs form. Make sure that you have your passport or your birth certificate and your ID handy for you because you need them to pass back through customs. And customs are very smiling or happy people, so you don't want to have them waiting because they will get with you real quick. So have that information 
with you and your cruise is officially open. It's over. It's done. So we've gone step by step through the cruise process. I hope this was helpful for you and prepares you for your upcoming cruise. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for travel-related videos every Thursday. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section below to try my best and answer them. So, this has been Travel with Vonda. Research, stay organized, and most of all, have a lot of fun. Bye.